Um, Ian for the uh, introduction. Uh, good evening um, everybody. I'm Martin Whitaker. I'm CEO um, of Diurnal. I'm joined here this evening by uh, Richard Bungie, our CFO, uh, and it's my, uh, my pleasure to, uh, to present uh, Diurnal um, to kick off this, uh, this shares presentation evening and also to present uh, in Edinburgh uh, once again. It's about uh, 12 months since our last presentation. So Diurnal is a specialty pharmaceutical company um, and we're one of the few uh, UK biotech companies that have taken a product from concept all the way through to commercialisation and are now generating revenues for the company. I'll take you through how we're doing that. So, uh, company snapshot. Uh, we have floated on AIM uh, at the end of uh, 2015. That was our uh, IPO price. Our current share price is up there and our market cap is around uh, £29 million. Our cash position at the end of um, the uh, 2018 uh, was just under £7 million, but since then um, we've raised um, further equity funding. We had a £5.9 million raise in June of this year, and we also received some substantial R&D tax credits um, as well. Uh, we have no debt, and we have um, some very um, long-standing and supportive long-term investors in the company, investors such as IP Group, uh, and Polar Capital. In terms of the executive team, uh, we have um, many years experience in taking uh, pharmaceutical products through development and into commercialization, and also leading companies through to successful exit as well. So in terms of the investment uh, summary, we are targeting initially the, uh, the uh, endocrinology market, and that's hormones. And initially, that's one particular hormone, uh, cortisol, and in particular diseases of cortisol deficiency. And we estimate that's a market op opportunity of over three billion US dollars. We're doing this with two products. Our first product is a pediatric product for children, um, Alkindi. It's approved in Europe and already successfully launched uh, in both Germany, uh, the UK, and also now uh, in Austria, and it's generating revenue uh, for the company. Our second product is a product called Chronicort. It's for adults with these diseases, and Chronicort has just completed its uh, phase three or pivotal um, clinical study uh, in Europe that read out at the end of last year. Uh, and we have had a, a positive uh, European Medicines Agency uh, meeting to really uh, lay out the regulatory pathway uh, for Chronicort with an anticipated positive opinion um, on that product uh, towards the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. The real commercial opportunity that we see for both of our products is in the way that they're prescribed. So the diseases that we're dealing with are rare or orphan diseases, and, the, and where these uh, patients reside is around specialist treatment centres, so university-type hospitals um, where these patients are treated by... Um, by dedicated physicians. So to put some numbers on that, there's around 17 such centres in the UK, around 120 centres in the big EU5. And therefore, with a modest sales force of perhaps 20 to 30 reps at peak, we'll be, very, uh, we'll be able to easily target uh, such centres where the vast majority of the patients uh, reside. In terms of um, the US and the rest of the world, we're seeking partners uh, for the US, and we've already entered into some marketing and distribution agreements uh, for Israel, Australia uh, and New Zealand uh, for the remaining global markets. Our commercial exclusivity is underpinned by what's called orphan drug designation and because we deal with rare or orphan diseases we have certain regulatory privileges from a regulator. So if we get a product um, approved um, in Europe we can have 10 years market exclusivity uh, using the orphan drug designation, 7 years market exclusivity from approval um, in the US. In addition to that regulatory exclusivity, um, our products are underpinned by a wholly owned diurnal patent portfolio, which extends that exclusivity all the way out to 2034. And we have an earlier stage product pipeline entering clinical trials. So with those attributes, it's our vision to become a world leading endocrinology specialty pharma company. So a little bit of background about uh, the endo endocrine system and hormones and why they're very important to us. So the endocrine system is absolutely critical to life. It's a collection of glands that produce hormones, which are the chemical messengers uh, in the body that regulate a number of important processes, 
such as growth, development, and sexual function. If you're missing a hormone, then this often leads to chronic diseases which require lifelong treatment and have serious health impacts for the patients. And usually, if a hormone is missing, you need to replace that in the patient, and often the replacement is for life. Of course, the hormone that everyone's heard about is insulin, and the disease is diabetes. And this is really where large pharmaceutical companies have really uh, ploughed their efforts over many, many years and have lots of products to address uh, this, uh, this big market. However, at Dionol, we spend a lot of our time speaking to clinicians outside of diabetes. And if you speak to these uh, clinicians, then what you find is that there's a multitude of diseases where actually patient needs are currently going unmet. And this is the area that Dionol um, operates in. And one of the reasons for operating this area, it's a very favourable competitive um, environment. What you find is um, companies which are of similar size to Dionol, maybe picking off one or two of these indications which don't have products and developing them through uh, to market. So there's plenty of scope uh, there for consolidation. And furthermore, in terms of development costs, the costs are very modest to get a, a, a drug to market. Being mindful of dinosaur size, we can't tackle all of those diseases on the right-hand side of the Venn diagram. So this is our uh, very much focused um, development uh, pipeline. We're focusing on our two lead products, um, Alkindi uh, and Chronocort, these treatments of cortisol um, deficiency. Um, Alkindi marketed, as I said, and Chronocort, we're targeting a genetic disease. In the first instance, it's called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH uh, for short. And then we've also... Um, spoken to the regulator and we have the option using the same product to expand to a, a wider group of diseases of cortisol deficiency, so-called adrenal insufficiency, and um, without any further clinical studies. Beyond that, in terms of our pipeline, we have a testosterone uh, program which has just completed um, a phase one, phase two clinical trials in the target patient group and that will read out in the next quarter. So there's some uh, news coming up uh, soon. And then we have some earlier stage products, which are very much of a preclinical stage. So I'm going to just talk about more, a little bit more about these diseases of cortisol deficiency that we're targeting of our lead products. So cortisol is an essential hormone. It's essential for life. Without cortisol, uh, you will die. And if you're unfortunate enough not to be able to produce cortisol, then you suffer from chronic fatigue, uh, depression, and you're always at risk of what's called an adrenal crisis and death. And this simply means you don't have enough cortisol on board to fight off an, an infection. You may go into a coma uh, and you may die. There are a couple of causes of cortisol deficiency. Uh, the adrenal insufficiency that I mentioned before is uh, an acquired loss of cortisol, which means you lose the ability to produce cortisol uh, during your lifetime. Uh, two causes. One is Addison's disease, which is an autoimmune disease. And this destroys the adrenal gland, which is just above your kidney. Typical onset is around 20 to 30 years of age. The second cause um, is called hyperpituitarism. This is caused by a benign tumor in the pituitary gland, which is just behind the gray brain. And that affects the signaling from the pituitary to the adrenal gland, shutting off cortisol production. And that typically, typically occurs in patients around 50 or 60 years of age. Typical symptoms of adrenal insufficiency, it's this chronic fatigue. So patients feel very tired. And when I say tired, you know, literally don't have the energy to get out of bed and carry on with their daily lives, 50% of patients can't work and they're always at risk of death of an adrenal crisis. There is a second disease, a genetic disease called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and that uh, presents from birth, and this is caused by a genetic block uh, in the body, so it's a genetic defect, which leads to an enzyme block, which means the body cannot produce um, cortisol. And there's two issues that patients face with CAH. The first is they suffer from this chronic fatigue, as with AI, and the second is they suffer from a buildup of um, androgens or sex hormones, and these are, the build, these are the building blocks of cortisol, and because of this enzyme block, they're not able to be converted to cortisol and build up in the body, causing harm. So, for example, if you're a little girl born with congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you have all these male hormones buzzing around your body. You may be born with ambiguous genitalia, so little girls look like little boys, may require corrective um, surgery later on in life. Both little boys and little girls go through puberty incredibly early on in life, around the ages of five or six, so grow very quickly um, as young children. But when it comes to years when puberty should occur, the teenage years, actually growth is turned off. So they end up being a lot shorter um, than normal uh, in, in adulthood and have complications in terms of fertility, metabolism, 
and ultimately this patient group will die some seven years younger than the normal population. And really, it's Diurnal's ambition to treat these patients effectively for the first time from birth, initiating with Alkindi, switching to Cronacort and continuing treatment all the way through to old age. As I mentioned, the competitive environment is, is very favourable for, uh, for diurnal in terms of a genetic disease, uh, CAH. Uh, we have no competitors uh, in Europe and none coming up on the rails. In terms of a wider disease, adrenal insufficiency, there's only one competitor in Europe, a product called Plenadren, um, and its exclusivity will expire uh, in a couple of years' time, enabling us to move uh, into that uh, market. In the US, again, the situation is favourable. Uh, we're well ahead of um, the rest of the uh, competition. There are a handful of companies uh, that are developing um, alternative products um, to, to diurnal, but are very much behind in the development uh, stage, uh, development life cycle of their products. They're mostly at phase two, so early, fa early patient studies, whereas we're already at phase three, so pivotal studies required uh, for registration. Furthermore, these competitive products um, take a different approach to diurnal. They're using new chemical entities uh, that only tackle one of the issues of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, that of the androgen excess or high androgens, whereas Chronocort, our product, tackles both the chronic fatigue uh, but also the high androgens um, as well. So I'm just going to delve a bit more into Alkindi uh, and Chronocort. So Alkindi is a major breakthrough in paediatric um, adrenal insufficiency and up until Alkindi approval in 2018, this is what patients um, were taking uh, across the world. So these are adult tablets, uh, crushed uh, or compounded, uh, and then given to young children uh, from birth. And clearly this type of medicine is not fit for the 21st century and is not licensed uh, for paediatric use. And in fact, Diana was the first licensed hydrocortisone product uh, for use uh, in a paediatric setting. Here's a picture of the UK PAX. It comes in a very uh, friendly paediatric uh, presentation. So it's granules of drug that can be sprinkled onto the tongue of a child and then swallowed, uh, or sprinkled um, onto food. It also has a taste masking layer to alleviate the bitter taste of hydrocortisone. Uh, and it comes in paediatrically friendly doses of 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 5 milligrams. In terms of its um, exclusivity, as I mentioned, it's approved. Um, it's, uh, the exclusivity is based on what's called a PUMA, or Paediatric Use Market Authorization, which affords 10 years market exclusivity in Europe. It's already been successfully launched um, in the UK. And underpinning, underpinning that approval was a successful um, price from a Scottish Medicines Consortium uh, around this time uh, last year, which really enabled us to get, obtain a premium price for this product uh, here in the UK and to be ena enable us to, uh, to market the product. Um, both in Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland, England and Wales. Since then, we've achieved prices um, across, uh, across Europe um, and commercial sales are in line with analysts' um, expectations. And plans are in place for um, European-wide launches uh, in territories that can support a, a premium price. Importantly, the sales and marketing, the sales and marketing infrastructure we've put in at Diurnal um, for Alkindi can also be used uh, for Coronacort uh, once that product uh, is approved. So it's the same treatment centres where we visit uh, for our kindy patients, they will also treat uh, Coronacort patients as well. In terms of our second product, uh, Coronacort, this is for adults, and the treatment of adults with congenital adrenal hyperplasia is slightly different from that of uh, children. So individuals, normal individuals, have a very distinct circadian or about the day rhythm of cortisol uh, which is shown here in, in yellow. It's low at night, enabling you to get to sleep. It begins to rise from around three o'clock in the morning. It rises to give you a peak on or before waking, and cortisol is your energy hormone. It's really thought to prepare you for the day ahead, and then it decreases gradually throughout the day. If you have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you do not have this rhythm, you have a flat line. And over the years, physicians have um, noticed the importance of this rhythm and tried to replicate it using you know, standard um, hydrocortisone tablets seen here in red. But this leads to a non-physiological profile. At certain times of the day, you're over-treated with drug. At certain times of the day, you're under-treated with drug. But importantly for these patients, there is no overnight coverage of cortisol. And this is really important for this patient group because it's during the night when... Uh, the androgens, the sex hormones, rise and cause damage to the body. So by the time you've taken your first dose of normal hydrocortisone, it's already too late. 
but damage has been done to the patient's body and this is repeated day in, day out for the rest of their lives. So at Dynal, we developed Chronocort, which is a modified release hydrocortisone, um, which is given lasting at night, first thing in the morning, in what we call a toothbrush regimen. And the features of Chronocort are that there's no drug released for a period of three to four hours after you, in, you ingest the capsule. Then Chronocort begins to uh, release, gives you that peak on waking. You take a second capsule, first thing in the morning, and that provides you with cortisol coverage throughout the day. And in our first um, studies in patients carried out at one of the world leading sites in the US, we showed that when we switched patients onto Chronocort, after six months, 94% of patients have their androgens uh, controlled into the optimal range, which is a very significant um, finding. We then carried out uh, a pivotal phase three uh, study in Europe. And what the regulators wanted us to show that we have control of androgens, these sex hormones over a 24 hour period in these, in these patients and for these androgens to be controlled in a very specific range, we call the reference range here to here. And we have Chronocort uh, in blue, standard of care in red. And what we showed on, after six months of Chronocort in 122 CAH patients was that we achieved 24 hour control of androgens in this patient group. Whereas in the standard of care, the, uh, the patients escaped, particularly in the morning, leading to high androgens. And please note this logarithmic uh, y-axis scale here. So we took this uh, data to the uh, European regulator, the European Medicines Agency, uh, but unfortunately what, uh, what happened was that we did not meet the primary endpoint of our study, and that was due uh, to a statistical issue of a method that we used uh, to, uh, to measure the cortisol uh, control over a 24-hour period, despite Chronocort having uh, many beneficial um, effects. And these beneficial effects um, are listed here. So we achieved better control... Oops. We achieved better control... Um, of the androgens in the key morning period. We managed to um, have a significantly lower uh, androgen profile over 24 hours. Chronocort was less variable than the standard of care. And importantly, we achieved um, chronocort control with a lower dose of steroid than the standard of care. And importantly, we had no adrenal crises in the chronocort group uh, versus the standard of care group. We took all this evidence to the, to the regulator and they agreed with us that it was a, a data issue, uh, sorry, a statistical issue rather than a data issue. And they've said that we can submit for our market authorization, which we're in the process of doing, doing so. And we'll submit that our market authorization uh, in Europe without the need for any additional clinical studies by the end of this year. The slide just summarizes uh, where we are in terms of. Um, Chronocort Europe. This was the largest interventional study ever carried out in these patients with this rare disease. Um, and we're on track to submit um, our market authorization uh, by the end of calendar year 2019. In terms of the rest of the world, um, as I mentioned before, we're looking for a partner to take us forward um, in the US uh, for Chronocort uh, and Alkindi. We've had some good news from a US regulator for Alkindi that they've accepted uh, in principle, uh, the data that we uh, plan to submit for a marketing authorization. And again, we plan to submit that uh, shortly. Um, and in Japan, uh, we've had some patents uh, granted uh, recently for both of our products. And Japan is the third uh, largest pharmaceutical market. And we're exploring options with potential partners in that territory. But where we have moved quickly is in territories such as Australia, New Zealand, and Israel, where we have already entered into marketing and distribution agreements uh, with partners and recently we announced we've submitted um, our market authorization packages in those territories and we would expect those um, to, um, to be favorable um, and for revenues to be generated in those territories uh, in the second half of 2020. So to summarize in terms of the next three years will really be uh, some exciting milestones coming up uh, for diurnal. Uh, firstly um, in Europe uh, we have um, Alkindi approved, generating uh, revenue. Uh, we have Chronocourt um, market authorization um, submission uh, coming up in quarter four of this year. And then we estimate approval will be 12 to 14 months after that. In the US with Alkindi, we're submitting our new drug application to the FDA again by the end of this year. And again, we estimate approval will be towards the end of 2020. The US regulators required us to carry out some further studies um, in the US, and we intend to carry those out uh, with a partner. Um, so those studies are there subject um, to partnering. And then what we hope to do is to take uh, Chronocort 
uh, into the wider indication of adrenal insufficiency, the much larger market, although still uh, an orphan drug, uh, both uh, in Europe uh, and in the US uh, in the medium term. So in terms of the outlook for the rest of uh, 2019, we've achieved um, a lot um, over the past uh, nine months or so. Uh, things to look out in terms of news flow. Um, we have our full year results uh, coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, and then we have um, our uh, readout of our dye test, which is our testosterone results, uh, coming up uh, in, in Q4. And then we have our two market authorization uh, submissions coming up, uh, both in the US uh, and in Europe. So to summarize, uh, we're building um, a global endocrinology specialty pharma company. We've already established a strong position in orphan diseases. We have a credible market access strategy and opportunities to broaden uh, the offering with a uh, pipeline of exciting products and importantly, a strong team with the ability to deliver. And thank you for your attention.